turn with me into Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1, we'll read verses 3 through 12, if you'll stand with me in reverence to God's Word. Yeah. Starting in verse 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world. <coughs> that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Yeah. Having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to Himself, according to the good pleasure of His will, to the praise of the glory of His grace, wherein He hath made us accepted in the Beloved, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace, wherein He hath abounded toward us in all wisdom and prudence, and having made known unto us the mystery of His will according to His good pleasure, which He hath purposed in Himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times He might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven, and which are on earth, even in Him, and whom also we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined, uh, predestinated according to the purpose of Him who worketh all things after the counsel of His own will, yeah. that we should be to the praise of His glory, who first trusted in Christ. Yeah. Lord, we thank You tonight for this Word. We just pray that You would help us to Glean the truths from it tonight, Lord, that we might store Your truth in our hearts. And Lord, that we might truly live acceptable in Your sight. Lord, that the thoughts of our uh, heart or the meditation of our heart and the uh, words of our mouth would be acceptable in Your sight. Yeah. Lord, we just pray that You would continue to use us, Lord, to be witnesses and vessels of mercy and honor. Lord, forgive us where we fail you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Tonight I want to preach about redemption through His blood. And He says in verse 7, In whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of His grace. Yeah. We have been redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Amen. And... Uh, I was asked this week, what does that mean to be redeemed by His blood? And I gave an example, I'll give it tonight. Is if, uh, imagine if you owed the bank, let's say $50,000, and it was a debt that you could not pay. And they were going to come and take all that you had and take everything that you owned and, and take it away from you, and, and you were going to jail because you could not pay this debt. And let's say someone came in your place and paid your debt to that bank. Now you owe nothing to the bank, but now you owe everything to the person who paid your debt. Now that person comes to you and says, you don't owe me anything. Your debt is clear. That is how Jesus redeemed us through His blood. We were debtors, amen? Yeah. And we owed our lives because of sin that we had. And because the Bible says that we are all sinners, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Yeah. So we were debtors because of our sin, and it was a debt that we couldn't pay. And yet Christ paid the debt for us by shedding His blood. He redeemed us by His blood. He purchased us by His blood. And now we owe everything to Him. But He has forgiven us all our sins according to the riches of His grace. Amen. Not by works which we have done. Amen. You can't work for your salvation. Yeah. It's a free gift. Yeah. Amen. If I said... 
You know what? I've got $100 I'm going to give to you, Brother Clifford. It's all yours, free, no charge. But I would like you to come over to my house this week and mow my grass. It's not free, is it? There's strings attached. Yeah. But the gift of God is free to all those who believe and call on the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Look at Acts chapter 20. It says here in Acts chapter 20 and verse 28, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers to feed the church of God which He hath purchased with His own blood. Amen. Amen. Why is church important? Because it belongs to Him. Amen. Amen. He purchased it with His own blood. Why is it important for us to live in a way that is pleasing unto God? Because He purchased us with His blood. Yeah. Why is it important for the pastor to get up and preach what God has laid on his heart, no matter what it is, and not add anything to it or take anything away? Because God has purchased His church with His own blood. Yeah. As Paul, or as uh, Paul tells these overseers here, these uh, elders of the church. He says, take heed. Amen? It's important to God because He paid for it by His own blood. Amen. And it should be important to us. Amen? We should not take our salvation lightly. Amen. You know, it's easy to take it lightly because we didn't have to pay for it for our, with our own blood. Amen? Amen. So, it's a, you know, sometimes we overlook things. You know, if someone came and just paid all my debt, I'd be thankful at first, but, you know, maybe down the line, I might start, start forgetting about it, you know? It might not mean as much to me, but we need to remember that there was a price paid for our sin. Amen? Amen. Amen. And we didn't have to pay for it. Because Christ paid it for us by shedding His blood for us on the cross of Calvary. Amen. And not just on the cross, but how He was beaten for our sins. Amen. For His iniquities, He was beaten by the whips that He was beaten with. And so there was a price paid for our sins and we are redeemed because of Jesus' blood. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3 and verses 23 through 26 it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation through faith in His blood to declare His righteousness for the remissions of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, His righteousness, that He might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Amen. Why does He have the power to save? Because He paid for our sins. Amen. He became the payment for our sins. And it is by faith in His blood. Now some people have said, you know, that this proves that the King James is faulty because it, it says faith in His blood and it should say something different. But no, it is faith in His blood. That's right. Amen. Because it is His blood that paid for our sins. That's right. Amen. It is His blood that has the power to save. Amen. Amen. There is power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Healing power. power. Amen. That's right. It is a fountain of God Amen. to all those who will come by faith to Jesus Christ Amen. to wash us clean from our sins right. and to make us whiter than snow. Amen. And you have to have faith in the power of the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because that is our redemption. And then look at Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews 
15 that says, starting in verse 11, But Christ being come and high priest of good things to come, by a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building, neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. For if the blood of bulls and of goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. Yeah. Now we are made free by the blood of Jesus Christ. Yeah. That blood that He shed for us, taking it to that holy place and obtaining eternal redemption for us. Yeah. Now because He did that for us, we have liberty to serve Him. Amen. Amen. Now, we are His bond servants. Amen. He hasn't made us servants. He set us free. But because of the gratitude that we have or should have for what He has done for us, we want to serve Him. Amen. Amen. We want to do what's pleasing to Him because He had such great love for us Amen. and sacrificed Himself for us. But even though it was free, there was a purpose to it. Amen? There was a purpose for His shedding, Him shedding His blood for us. And He says over in Ephesians chapter 1, says in verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who hath blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. According as He hath chosen us in Him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before Him in love. Yeah. You see, if we love the Lord then we are going to want to be holy and unblameable before him. Amen? We are going to want to live the way He taught us to live in His Word. We are going to want to bring glory to His name and not shame. Because He shed His blood not just so that we could be free from our sin, but that we might be holy and unblameable before Him in love. Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 10 through 22 says, For we are His workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember that He bring in time... Excuse me. Wherefore remember that He being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time ye were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope, and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Yeah. For He is our peace, who hath made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in His flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in Himself of twain one new man, so making peace, and that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. Yeah. 
and came and preached peace to you which were afar off and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one Spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Amen. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord. In whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. Amen. God has made both Gentiles and Jews one man in the flesh. Amen. Amen. He has broken down the middle wall of partition between us and made us one. And we are now one in Christ. Yeah. One building, amen, one house built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets and Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. Yeah. And now who we are built together, growing up unto a holy temple in the Lord, that we might be His habitation. Amen. You see, we are to be holy and without blame before Him in love. We are His workmanship. Amen. Created in Christ Jesus unto good works. Yeah. No longer to live in the past. To live in the lust of the flesh. Where we were in times past. Amen. But now we are made one in Christ. We have the promises. We have the inheritance of, with the saints in life. Amen? Amen? We have been made accepted in the beloved. Amen. Look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verses 25 through 27. It says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, that he might present to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Yeah. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it to present it holy and unblameable. Amen? To make us something that we were not before. Yeah. Amen? And that is acceptable to God. Yeah. We weren't acceptable to God before. We weren't a habitation for God before. But now we are. Yeah. And we have been given the promises of His Word. And we have been given the power to do His will. Then look at 1 Corinthians chapter 6. But of Jesus Christ. People say, well, why couldn't He save any other way? And many people believe in another way of salvation. But there is no other way. Amen? There is only one foundation. No other foundation can any man lay. Amen? There is only one, and that Amen. is Jesus Christ. Amen. Through His shed blood. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verses 15 through 20 says, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of an harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that... He which is joined to an harlot is one body. For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you? which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which
which are God's. Amen. Amen. We are to separate ourselves unto God as we would separate ourselves unto our own spouse. That's right. Amen. As we separate, we that are married have separated ourselves unto our uh, husbands and to our wives. We are to separate ourselves from the world and the worldly things to Christ. Amen. To be married to Him. Amen. Because He has bought us with the price. We are not our own anymore. We do not belong to ourselves. But we are one spirit with Christ. Many people just want to date Christ. Right? Yep. Even the uh, people who claim to be saved, they just want to uh, date Christ. They want to go out with Him a couple of hours a week. and If that... But we are to be married to Christ. Amen. Yeah. To be separated from this world and to serve the living God. Yeah. And not only did He shed His blood to redeem us and to make us holy and without blame, but He shed His blood for us that we should be to the praise of His glory. Amen. Amen. Amen that we should be to the praise of His glory. God has high aspirations for us. Amen? Yeah. God has chosen us to be the praise of His glory in Christ Jesus. That means we can have the victory in yeah. Christ. Amen? We can fight the good, fight of faith. Yeah. We can be holy and unblameable before Him in love because that's what He chose for us. Yeah. Look at 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to Himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. Yeah. For He hath made Him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Yeah. Amen. He took our sin upon Himself, that we might be made His righteousness. Amen. Amen. What a wonderful thing yeah. that we have to be ministers of God. Yeah. To be ministers of the reconciliation. And what are we to minister? What are we to preach? He tells us that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them. That's what we preach. Amen? Yeah. Christ died to save sinners. Yeah. Amen. I told someone Friday night uh, that we're all sinners. And that if we aren't sinners, then Christ didn't die for us. Amen. Because Christ died to save sinners. Yeah. And you have to admit and realize your sin before you can come to Christ. Yeah. That's what we are to preach. Paul said, I cease not to preach Christ and Him crucified. Amen. Why was He crucified? For the sins of the whole world. Yeah. For yours and for mine. Amen. Amen. And we are ministers of that reconciliation. Yeah. God saved us so that we could be His ministers. Yeah. To bring honor and praise and glory to His name. Yeah. 
Look at Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5, verses 17 through 21. It says, For if by one man's offense death reign by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one, Jesus Christ. Therefore, as by the offense of one, judgment came upon all men to condemnation, even so by the righteousness of one, the free gift came upon all men unto justification of life. For as by one man's disobedience many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Moreover, the law answered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Yeah. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. By one man sin entered into the world. That man was Adam. But also by one man we have been made free. Amen. Amen. We have been justified and given life eternal. And that man is Jesus Christ. Yeah. I love verse 20. He says, Moreover, the law entered. The law was given that the offense might abound. In other words, that we might know that we're sinners. Yeah. Amen? The law was given to teach us that we had fallen short of the glory of God. Yeah. But where sin abounded, where we have seen that we are sinners... God's grace did much more abound. Yeah. Amen. It means more to us when we realize our sin that Jesus died for our sin. Amen. It means more to us when we realize just how awful we are and what great things God did for us. Yeah. Even knowing that we are such sinners. That as Sin reigned unto death, even so might grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ. You know what? God's grace is sufficient. Amen? God's grace is sufficient to help us overcome temptation yeah. and to live for Him. And as Paul said, that He had not bestowed upon them His labor in vain. Amen? And that we do not come, that we do not fail the grace of God that has been given to us, that we should become uh, to the praise of His glory, to fight the good fight of faith, to be ministers of reconciliation, to separate ourselves unto Him. And then 1 John chapter 5. And we'll be through. 1 John chapter 5 and verses 17 through 21. It says, All unrighteousness is sin, and there is a sin not unto death. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. But he that is begotten of God keepeth himself, and that wicked one toucheth him not. And we know that we are of God, and the whole world lieth in wickedness. And we know that the Son of God has come and hath given us an understanding, that we may know Him that is true, and we are in Him that is true, even in His Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols. Amen. Yeah. Hey, we have an understanding from God. We have an understanding that we were sinners, 
that Christ paid for our sin, and now we are to be ministers of that reconciliation. Amen. All unrighteousness is sin, and we know whosoever is born of God sinneth not. That's right. That man that has been created in us cannot sin. Amen. Yeah. And we are to walk in that spirit so that we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. Yeah. To walk in newness of life and not in that old man. In his corruption. And he tells us here, little children, keep yourself from idols. And as we read this morning, the covetousness, which is idol worship. Amen? That's where it comes down to. The Bible tells us that we are to be, uh, to have godliness with contentment is very right. gain. Mm -hmm. Amen? And that's where we need to be. Yeah. Is to be content with what God has for us and to live godly for Him. Yeah. Because He has redeemed us through His blood. We owe a debt, amen, that we could not pay. And He paid a debt that He did not owe. It. Yeah. Amen. Right. So that we might be made His righteousness. Yeah. Amen. Let's stand. Lord, we thank You tonight for Your love and Your mercy. Lord, we thank You for Your blood that was shed for our sins. Lord, to cleanse us and make us whole. And Lord, to make us holy and unblameable before You. Lord, help us not to tread underfoot that sacrifice. But Lord, help us to bring honor and glory to Your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.